Liverpool nil, Manchester United nil. It was a more exciting game than the stalemate between United and City. But as a City fan, it's a great result. It is a great result. And that's what I predicted, a draw. I got it right. And it feels good. It feels good. But I'm going to give a fair assessment on the game. I'm not going to really assess the game from a City fan perspective, really. And, you know what I mean? And be all petty and... No, no, no. That's not what I'm here to do, guys. That's what, But I, I just wanted to get it out of the way, you know? For the people who don't know, I'm a City fan. And it's a great result. It is a great result. I didn't even predict a draw because I'm a City fan. That's just how I assess the match. And it turned out to be the right, right prediction. I did predict a 1-1 draw. But both teams were scoreless despite the numerous amount of chances created on both ends with Liverpool of course creating more but United having the more clear-cut chances which were foiled of course by the brilliant Alison Becker so look nil nil United are still on top of the table they go up to 37 points Liverpool what are they right now they're third I think they're about third right now well the life table, they would be fourth, I think. They would be fourth because this is the halftime break on the City Crystal Palace game. So Liverpool will be fourth, around fourth ish. You know what I'm saying? And they, they, they could drop further down the table because they, they haven't been themselves. They haven't been themselves. And it, it, it is still early, but it's halfway through the season and. They won't have that psychological advantage over their opponents. Whereas if they were on top of the table, they would have that. You see what I'm saying? Because every time I would debate that Liverpool are not playing well and they need to get their act together, the Liverpool fans would say, but guess what? Where are we? We're still on top of the table, right? You see what I'm saying? But judging from Klopp's recent interviews, both pre- and post-match interviews, I just hear some jitters in his voice. He sounds rattled. He sounds like he, he, he doesn't have that, that, that plan. Seriously. Because I'm listening to Klopp and he's saying, you, he's like, he's neither here nor there. He's trying to play things safe and, and, and be in between with his replies. You see what I mean? It's like he, he's warm. He's neither hot nor cold. He's just warm. And you can't be warm. You can't win the Premier League title by being warm. Liverpool were hot last season. United used to be hot. City, very hot. Very hot in the last decade. And heating up right now. You see what I'm saying? So, Liverpool got to get their act together. They got to get their act together. I think playing Henderson for being at the back, it worked. It worked. At the end of the, the day, you could say it worked. But when you have those guys at the back there who, you know, they're midfielders, you're taking something out of your midfield. Think about how better that midfield would have been with Thiago, Fabinho, and Henderson. It would have given Liverpool options. A Wijnaldum off the bench, maybe. A Shakiri off the bench, maybe. It would have given them options. You have Van Dijk back there. You have Gomez or Matic back there. You have a stronger team. Allison would not have been left so exposed. Fabinho Henderson did what they had to do. But they were still breached on a few occasions. Still kept a clean sheet courtesy of the goalkeeper. But, but, even though Liverpool created so many chances and they had so much of the ball they could have still lost the game by a narrow one nil margin or even two united were happy to just let liverpool have the ball and counter they were very comfortable off the ball whenever liverpool went forward they dealt with them put in a few blocks a few you know aerial duels won clearances and they were rather comfortable. 
I don't think the hair was tested enough for me, you know. With a shot, a snapshot, not enough purchase, easy save. Best chance I could remember was that Tiago shot, but the hair had that covered. So many, so many opportunities for Liverpool. Not clear cut opportunities, but did not test the goalkeeper enough. This is what now? Three games without a goal? Uncharacteristic. This is not the Liverpool team we have come to know under Jurgen Klopp. First time since 2005 that Liverpool have gone three games without scoring. Like, are, are we for real here? You got Salomon and Firmino all misfiring at the same time. Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold are not clicking like they used to. Thiago is working his butt off in the midfield, but it's not enough. It is not enough. I think Liverpool did everything they could have done to score. Except score. Lacking the sharpness and the precision up top. But you got to give United the credit. You got to give them the credit. You have to. Harry Maguire played well. De Gea, he didn't have much to do. But when he, you know, was called to action, he did his thing. I think Solskjaer got his 11 right. He got his 11 right. Lindelof and the big fridge Harry Maguire, you know, as we like to, you know, call him, was brilliant. I have to give credit when credit due. They were brilliant. I think Aaron Wan-Bissaka had a, a 6 out of 10 game. He handled Marnie well. Marnie, you know, and him had a 50-50, you know, challenge over there. I think, you know, 6.5 6 for both of them. But Luke Shaw on the left handled Salah like a boss. Luke Shaw handled Salah really, really well. He was just there and he was just niggly, you know what I'm saying? He just handled Mo Salah very, very well. Pogba had a good game. Very, very good game. Bruno Fernandes, not the best of game, but his free kick uh, went a little wide there. You negate the threat of Bruno Fernandes, you, you're going to come away with something, a draw or win from the game. And Liverpool did just that. He didn't have the greatest of games. Full-time Premier League player of the month since he joined United a year ago. And he has been amazing, but not so amazing on the day. I think Fred and McTominay had good games. They were just daring about, frustrating Liverpool, winning the ball back, you know what I mean? They, they you know, so they played well. Rashford, he had an okay game. And Martial was so-so, not the best player on the day. Cavani came on and, you know what I mean, he, 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 his presence alone caused Liverpool quite a bit of trouble. But... When you go back and you think about those big saves that Allison made, I think one from Bruno Fernandes and the other from Pogba, that's where Liverpool gained the point, really. Fabinho was really, really good on the day. He did have his moments where, you know what I mean, he was, you're like, oh, shoot, you know, but overall, he was solid. He was really, really solid. A nil-nil game. No other way you could really assess the game. But this is my honest assessment of the match. I think United would walk away from Anfield the happier of the two teams. One point. Three points ahead of the defending champions. Liverpool. Would they be happy with the point? Better get a point than no point at all. So they would be happy and they have to go back to the drawing board. They play Burnley next. They have to go back to the drawing board and, you know, try to get their mojo back. Burnley got a point at Anfield last season and I think the game is at Anfield. I can't remember who United play, but they, they play in the middle of the week. I think it might be Sheffield United. So I can't remember. But they have been looking a lot better this season. First time they have been on top of the table. At this point of the season since the 2012 13 season when they last won the damn thing. So United are actually looking like they're about to put up a title challenge. 
You see what I mean? Because when they come up against the bigger teams, they are not losing. And when they have the smaller teams, they get the results. They have been very, very good on the road this season. Got to mention that. So if they continue this form, we have a hell of a title race on our hands this season. But Liverpool, you got to get your act together or else you're going to lose pace. You're going to lose steam with the likes of a Leicester, a Man United, Man City, of course, leading Crystal Palace as we speak. I got to wrap this video up to catch it back the second half. You have Tottenham Hotspur coming up. Chelsea, not so close. Arsenal, not so close. But you have the likes of Everton there and about as well. You see what I'm saying, guys? Look me in my eyes. You see what I'm talking about? I'm not saying anything wrong here. But overall, I think the players on both teams had solid games. Can't really pick out this one player that had a rotten game. I think, you know, Trent, he's working his way back. There was a few moments where, a few nervy moments. One of them where it was offside early on in the game from a, a set piece. And he tried to head the ball and he missed it. And there was another time when he head the ball off for a corner. That could have resulted in some, you know, a goal for United. So, Trent, you got to get your act together. But I think on a few occasions, you know, he did defend pretty well. Got to give credit when credit due. Same thing I'm, I'm, I said from the beginning. A few good balls in as well. Liverpool would want Trent Alexander-Arnold back to his very best. They would want Robertson to his optimum best. They would want some fit centre-back so they could have Fabinho and Henderson in the middle of the field to help out Thiago. You see what I'm saying? You Liverpool, you gotta get your club. You guys gotta get your act together. Origi did come on, had a few touches, almost was involved in a dangerous play towards the end there, but didn't really have a great effect on the game. Curtis Jones came on, did his thing, he tried, and Milner didn't have enough time on the field to affect the game at all. For United, I think they brought on Greenwood. Edinson, Cavani, and who was the other substitute? Can't even remember who was the other substitute if any other person came on at all. I know Bruno Fernandes went off and Martial went off. So I can't remember. Can't remember. But um, nil, 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 nil. You know, no block. It was a blockbuster event. But, you know, it's one of those moments where you go to watch a movie expecting great things and come out really disappointed, you know what I'm saying, as a viewer. But, you know, as I said, Liverpool would not be the happier of the two teams, or maybe they would be, but um, United, in my opinion, would be the happy team away from home, picking up a point to the champion, picking up a point to their biggest rival, Liverpool. 19 title well Liverpool has what 19, 19 titles or what 18, 18 titles Man United got what 20 so 38 titles between the two teams Liverpool trying to catch United United trying to you know keep that distance but ah oh man ah oh man frustrating day at the office for Liverpool frustrating day and as I said, United would walk away the happier of the two teams. No big controversial moments where, you know, the Liverpool fans have to cry about VAR. United didn't win a penalty. So, you get what I'm saying. So, guys, guys, I've been going on way too long, though. But I'll be back. I'll be back, you know, with a live stream or two this week. And hopefully I'll get to talk to you guys soon. So, I got to get back to the City Palace game. I've been going on way too long. It's almost 15 minutes. I'm pretty sure the game has restarted. But let me know if I miss any major talking points down below. Let me know your thoughts on the game. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button. And from your boy, Dominic Rich. Until next time, peace out. Rich Squad.